Okay, so today we're going to be working on uh, Django associations, which is basically just uh, kind of what we do with SQL, where you get basic requirements for an app and then you need to, to build something. So thinking about what your what your tables are going to look like and what's going to be in the tables and how they're connected. So this is mostly focused on you know, building building uh, an application kind of or designing an application from scratch and creating the tables and the relationships between the tables. <clears throat> so I'm going to start um, just like with SQL. I think it's good to start with some kind of visual thing that isn't code, uh, just to keep you oriented and, and grounded. So this the, the application that we want to model. We're going to keep it simple. Um, it's going to have uh, employees. Um, well, well, we'll start with uh, employees. You're gonna have an uh, employee and that's gonna have an ID, which is gonna be the primary key. Uh, and then I want uh, employees to have a profile. So, so this, uh, th this is a common pattern, especially in, in web applications that you'll see where you'll have something like a user, a user model, um, a, you know, like a basic user, which will have, you know, what's kind of the minimum uh, information I need to create an account. So I would have, you know, my email, which should be unique, and then maybe a password or something like that. So, so something very, um, very minimal that's really just focused on, you know, who am I and, um, you know, just who kind of who am I to this application. And then there's additional information that a user might also have. Things like, um, you know, what time zone am I in? Or what's my preferred language or whatever. So that kind of information, which is, let's say secondary or <clears throat> supplemental will often get put in a, uh, a, a profile model. <clears throat> and that profile model, um, would have a one-to-one -one relationship with the employee or the, the user. So you have a, a user. So it's basically like you could, in some sense, combine them together. So you could combine like the base user and the, uh, and the profile into the same table, but they're, it, it's, you know, it's best to separate them one, because the, even though it's information associated with the same uh, the same entity, it's it's really different kinds of information. And for example, your uh, the 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 base user information is probably not going to change, right? You're probably not going to be tweaking that model. So you know, uh, email, password, that kind of stuff. Like, there's no reason to go uh, to go for your application to go and change that model. Whereas the profile, you might you might be changing that uh, more frequently. You might update, um, you might update, uh, update the actual model more frequently. You might add some some new feature or some new preference or some new account setting or, or whatever. <clears throat> so if you, you generally want to avoid making changes to uh, a database that's already in production, but that does happen. Um, so you want to kind of minimize the surface area of that change and if you have a core user, then you want to keep that the same. So we're going to do something similar. We'll have an employee and then uh, an employee profile. So the employee will have a name. Let's just say, I'm, again, this is uh, keeping it simple. So employee will have a name and then um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's good enough for now. Um, and then the profile, we'll just do something supplementary, like um, uh, I'll do t-shirts. So if you work for a company, you get swag, right? So let's do t-shirt size. All right. Um, and then to connect these, we want to do a one-to-one. -one. So employee will have a connection to profile. Um, 
this will be a foreign key. So know here that we've just we've uh, we have the single bar here. So this is one. So one employee is associated with you know one employee is associated with one profile. One profile is associated with one employee. Okay. Uh, any questions about one-to-one -one relationships? Okay. Um, so uh, this application, so we have you know our employee and a profile. We also want to have projects. So within this company, um, an employee can work on different projects. So let's have a project. So what kind of relationship would project have to any of our other tables? Many to many. Did you say uh, many to many? Yeah, I figure many people could work on a project and one project could have many people working on it. Okay. Yeah. I I think that I think that's kind of a sensible default. You could imagine a situation where you might want to have a different relationship, but I think that's I think that works here. So uh, an employee can be associated with many projects and a project can have many employees. All right. So we got employee project and then so let's give this a And how do we um, so uh, how do we describe this many to many relationship? How do we express that in SQL ultimately? You need a three table. Yeah. So so we need uh, an additional table because so for th this one to one relationship or even a one to many relationship, you can just kind of say, you can just attach a reference basically. So this employee table is gonna have a profile associated with it. So you just give it a reference and that's, that's fine. Um, but for a many to many relationship that won't work. So we need to create an additional table. So um, these through tables or join tables or whatever uh, name you wanna call them, uh, they're often composed of a combination of, of the name. So, you know, employee projects or something like that. And we're gonna have a primary key like everything else. And then it's gonna have uh, connections to both. So employee projects, um, in this case, let's say, we don't need any additional information. It's basically just kind of a dummy table. It's just it just exists to connect these these two other tables. So we'll do um, that will be a foreign key. And I'll connect to. And we'll do the same thing here. So uh, profile ID is a foreign key. Oops, actually that's not profile. I wanna do project. Okay, so we have our employee over here with a a profile, and then we have this relationship here, where an employee can have lots of projects, a project can belong to lots of employees. Okay, are there any questions about what we've got here so far? Okay, um, 
So why 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 would we just um, do employee and project straight to project? I, I'm probably forgetting why. No, that, that's fine. So uh, you're asking, why can't we just kind of directly connect employee and project? Yes, and as well as profile and project. You know, just make a tape, make a make a row and project called employee ID and project ID, and just go it straight there. Yeah. So the the reason that we wouldn't connect these. So for we'll, we'll start with employee and project. The reason we wouldn't connect employee and project directly is that. So we could, for example, if we put all information from both employee and project into one table, we just have, you know, a bunch of columns. You could do it that way, um, but then you would have the issue of redundancy. So if I have, let me just pull up a spreadsheet. Uh, one sec here. All right, so let's say I have a, a spreadsheet and I have um, my employee table. We got my employee table here. And then that's gonna have, let's say ID, name, whatever. So, so one, two, three. Um, okay, so here's my employee table. And, and then I have another table, which is going to be projects. So that's also going to have an ID. And then the uh, code name. So if I want, for example, Bob to be able to be in uh, project alpha and Bob to be in project omega, omega I guess, um, then if I wanted to have that all in one table, I could do that. The issue is, so now if I copy this, so I have like, you know, both tables combined. And then he's also in Omega. This is like, so the problem here, <clears throat> I can do this and it works, but I'm now repeating, I'm repeating this information over and over again. So if Bob's in lots of projects, I have to repeat Bob's name over and over again. And if Bob, for example, changes his name or something like that, uh, then I don't just change it in one place here. When I have an employee table, I have to change it everywhere. So I have to go into this combined table and find every time Bob exists and then change his name there, which is just gonna, it, it's guaranteed to, to introduce bugs. So I don't know if, if that makes any more sense or just... yeah, no, yeah, that makes sense. So our through table, um, our through table is just taking the the employee IDs and the project IDs. And... Yeah, yeah. So the the um, through table. Let's do. Is going to have uh, let's see a employee ID and a project. ID. And in this case, so this these two rows would be represented as you know employee one, employee one, project one, and project two. Okay. So now I have this and I can kind of indirectly get so I can say, okay, Bob, uh, I want all of Bob's projects. So I have uh, I find Bob, let's say his ID is number one. So I go to the through table. 
and I say, get all rows where employee ID is one. And then I want to get all of those project IDs. So then I, from there, I can say, okay, so uh, employee number one is in projects one and two. So what, what are those projects? Well, I can just use the ID and then look up, you know, join the, the project table and say ID one is alpha and ID two is omega. So I can go from Bob all the way to all of his projects. Okay, cool. So it's, you know, it's, uh, it, it, this is not intuitive stuff. So um, yeah, sorry, I wish it were. Okay. Um, all right, so we have our, uh, our table now. So I'm gonna take a screenshot of this. Oh, this one here. Okay, so from here, I'm going to I want to translate the table we just made. So we've you know we've, we've designed our application, at least the kind of book the models we want to have for our application. So now I want to translate this into an actual Django project. So I'm going to have to install Django, which means I'm going to do it in a virtual environment. So I'm going to create one, Python dash M then, then. Activate it. And then I'll install Django. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to install Django extensions just to help me out as I'm developing. Totally optional. So once I've got Django installed, I can now use some of Django's magic to get a project going. So it's going to create all of the the you know files and folders that I'm going to need to start on a on a project. So Django admin start project, and this will be um, what will this be? Okay, so project big company, and then you can see the, uh, the file structure here. So it creates these two, here's the outer level. Um, and then this inner big company is the, uh, the project level stuff that I need. So it's the highest level things that I'm gonna need include settings and my initial URLs, which we'll talk about later. And then from there, I'm gonna CD with a big company, and then I'm gonna create an app. Um, so I can do Django admin app, and the app is gonna be, uh, let's see, let's call it projects. Okay. <clears throat> so, so I've now created my project, which is the huge thing, actually, I just bad name, but okay. Uh, so my app is now called projects, confusing, sorry. Um, and then from here is where I'm gonna have my models for this project. Before I do any of that, I'm gonna look at my settings file and I installed I installed a couple apps. Uh, I installed a third party app called Django extensions. Which I'm gonna add, and then also the app that I just made, which is called projects. And I can look through this. Uh, I'm just going to use the SQLite database for now. You could, you know, you can use Postgres, whatever. Okay, so that I think our settings are good right now. So once I have the settings, I'm going to go into our projects and I'm going to start with the models. Pull up this screenshot. Uh, 
Okay, so I've got uh, my profile employee, employee projects and projects. I'm gonna start with, uh, I'm gonna start with employee. How do I, um, let's see, I pick on someone. How about Stephanie? So Stephanie, how can I create uh, an employee table or model? Um, <laughs> you don't have to know. Yeah, exactly. class. Yeah, it, so it would be class, class employee parentheses models dot model. Yep. So we're gonna make our uh, employee. You know, our table is gonna be. A a class and it's going to inherit from Django's models.model, .model, which is going to do all kinds of work that we don't really need to care about. And but what we do need to care about is the columns that we give it. So we have this employee table and now we need the columns. And so we have a name first off. So that's pretty simple. And then if I want to make this a, a var car field so if i don't know i can go to the the documentation um yes this one this exists so file field do 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 I don't think I want file field, image field. But let's just look at some of these other ones. So there's our fields, a string field for small to large size strings. For large amounts of text, use text field. Um, okay. So notice that there's a, a validator here implicitly being used. So we know how to make our own validators, but Django's got a whole bunch built in. So that's an example of one. So let's use car field. So models dot car field, and then we need the max length. And we'll just do 10. Okay, so we have uh, an employee. I think that should be good enough for now. Um, but we, what we need to do now is create this profile that has a one-to-one -one -one relationship. So we could directly try writing that, um, but you know this is a, a common thing that you'll do and Django has a, a built-in way to support this. So we'll look in the documentation. Let's see, one-to-one, -one. okay. So here I am in the documentation. This is the database documentation. This is a little hard to find, but um, there's th th this kind of information is scattered throughout the documentation, but here's one uh, source I'd recommend. Okay, so one-to-one uh, -one relationships. So it says to define a one-to-one -one relationship, use one-to-one -one field. So we, how do you do a one-to-many um, a relationship? In Django. Try calling someone. Who we got? I just looked something up real quick, so I'll jump in. Okay. <clears throat> um. So it's similar to the one to one, but on the uh, the dunder string, uh, you you have two. Uh, instead of doing percent s the place, you know, you do percent s space percent s, and then you would have two variables you would go with. Um, okay. So yeah. So that's good. So that's how we override the the string method. Um, but what I'm asking is if, so, you know, from a, a database perspective, we have three kinds of relationships that tables can have to each other. There's one-to-one, -one, 
one to many and many to many. And we've seen so far mostly uh, one to many relationships in Django. So how do I how do I mark a field in a model as having a, a one to many relationship? Models dot many to many or one to many. Yeah. Okay, so so that's that, that's what you would think. You can see here that there's uh, you know models dot one to one fields. There's a models dot many to many field, which we'll see in a sec. But the one to many field is just called foreign key. So for whatever reason, it kind of breaks the pattern. But um, yeah, so it's models dot foreign key, which is a one to many relationship. So we can express uh, all three relationships directly in in uh, in Django. So we'll do this one first, one to one relationship. So we can see that th this example, we have a place and then a restaurant. So you can see that a uh, you know a restaurant is a place. So yeah, a restaurant is a place, but not every place is a restaurant. So this is one. This is one kind of use of a uh, a one to a one to one field where you have an, an is a relationship. So a restaurant is a place, um, but you know not, not every place is a restaurant. So in this case, the restaurant might be considered supplementary. It's kind of like an add on information. If you were um, if this were a class hierarchy, then place would be your base class and you would you would have like a restaurant subclass which would inherit from from place. But uh, the important thing we want here is this one to one field. So we, we tell it, okay, we're gonna define a field on restaurant and say it's one to one. So it's very similar syntax to the uh, foreign key. Already seen. So let's go here. So we want to have a profile. So we'll just go ahead and do that here. So profile one to one field and wow, which doesn't exist. So we're going to have to create a profile field. Class profile. And profile is going to have t-shirt size. And t-shirt size. There's a couple ways we do this. I'm just going to keep it simple. We could do like a choices thing. That's probably because we, we want we would want to have a limited subset of options, like you know, from small to extra large or whatever. Uh, but there's a finite set. So if this were on a form, you'd want it to display as maybe a drop down list with, with only the available options on it. Um, but for right now, we'll just use a, a car field. It's like the one, or actually maybe two. Should model on line four be capitalized? Yes, thank you. Okay, so um, now we have our one-to-one -one relationship here. So let's go ahead and, so I've changed my models. So what do I have to do once I've changed my models? Do a migration. Yeah, so I've, I've changed my code. So my, you know, my, uh, my Django code knows what my models are supposed to be, but my database doesn't know yet. So we have to basically take all of our code and then uh, turn that into database tables. Python manage.py make migrations. So we'll go through this two-step process. Make migrations is going to prepare everything. It's going to create this intermediate or, uh, uh, OK. See. Okay, so I have an error here and I'm missing a required uh, positional argument on delete. So on delete, 
I'll just do models.cascade. There are a few, there are a few options. This is kind of a default. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and it creates this migration uh, here. So you can take a look at it if you want. If something goes wrong, if you're doing something complex, you, you may need to modify it, but I wouldn't worry about that. Um, and then we'll actually migrate. So we've run everything and the first time we run it, we've got all the built-in Django apps that use databases. So they're doing their thing. And then included with that is what we did, which is right here. Okay, so once we have that, we should be able to go in and take a look at what we have. So Python and I shell plus. And let's take a look. So employee.objects. And it's an empty query set, but we didn't get an error. So that's good. And then we'll do the same thing. Profile.objects. What is what is objects? Does anyone know what Django calls calls that? So it's uh, it, it, it's a manager. So it's basically an, another class that's going to handle it's going to handle queries and things like that. Um, you can override that. There's a default one called objects. You can override it if you need to, but you probably shouldn't need to. Okay, so now I want to uh, I want to add some I want to add some data. So I'm gonna go I'm gonna install Django Seed, which I've used before. So pip install. And then you can use it from the command line. So Python. Manage pi shell. Well, actually, no, it's not that. Let me look it up. I forget. So I have to add it to the installed apps first. Go into my settings, I add it to my installed apps. So as things get complicated, um, so we have a mix of the default stuff. These are third party and this is ours. So you might wanna keep this a little more organized. Um, so you can do something like, Yeah. Mark these, so, you know, just to add some kind of organization. Okay, um, so installed apps. So I'm gonna see how I can run this from the command line. Uh, Manage.py seed and then the app name. So and the app name is projects and then number we'll do 20. Getting an error here, even though I'm using the um, SQLite database, I think this library requires that. So I'm just going to go ahead and install Psychop G2.
and I'll run this again. Okay, so that works. So I have some dummy data just to look at. I can, you know, I'll do it myself, but this is convenient to get started. And I'm gonna go into the shell using the Django extensions shell plus, and now I can write a query. Okay, so I have a bunch of employees, but this is not very helpful. So how can I help myself out and give my, you know, I want to display something more sensible than object two, object three. Under string. Yeah. So I can uh, do that to both of these. And the exit and then reload. And look at all the employee objects again. And now I can see this is obviously you know big data, but um, I can see all, all these things. So if I want to get all of the um, I want to get the profile for uh, for, for this first employee, what, how can I how can I do that? I think you just treat it as a list and get the first get the employee at the first index. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I think we we can do that. Um, if I know I just want one though, if I know I just want one, I can also write uh, a get query, which will just get me that directly. So I can do um, <clears throat> so I know that the, the primary key or the ID you can use either one um, is one. It's the first one. So I, you know, in a more realistic sense, what I would do is probably whatever information I had. So I'd look up by name or something like that and then get the ID from there and then use that. But here, one that works. So now I wanna get the profile for employee one. Is so it just square brackets, um, profile in single quotes? Okay, yeah. So you could do, uh, you can actually access it with dot syntax. So profile. And you can see that it's right there. So this profile FA, I don't know what that is. So what if I want to take, now I want to take a look at this actual profile. What if I want to see the t-shirt size, which is already kind of displayed here, but. Could you just string the dot syntax along? Uh, you could, you can also just access it directly. So t-shirt size. These are, we, we can, treat this stuff like, like objects. So I have an employee class. So I get the employee, the, the instance of the employee, E1. And then I can see that it has a profile field. So I can do employee or E1 dot profile. And that itself is another class or an instance of a class. And from there, that instance, I can take a look at this field, t-shirt size. 
So you can you can treat these like like objects. That's I mean that's the real benefit of of having uh, an API like this. Um, what about the reverse relationship? So let's say I want to start with the the profile where the t-shirt size is FA. Uh, profile.objects.get. Okay. okay. So we know the ID we could access directly, but we only know the, um, the size. So I'm gonna do T shirt size is, let's see what that gets us. Okay, so that works if there were no results. If, if nothing matched this query, we would get an error. If we got more than one result, we would also get an error. So get requires you to, to just have one, uh, you know, you can only get one thing back. So now we have this profile. So how do we go from a profile to the employee? When you have to search the employee table since there's no foreign yeah. key in the profile table. Yeah, so that's a great that's a great thought. If we look at the code here, then there's no obvious way to go. So I'm going from employee to profile, sure. If we say employee dot profile, right? That makes sense. But here, there's no there's no obvious way. There's nothing in our code, you know, that goes from profile to employee. But because we're using this one-to-one -one field, Django is doing some magic behind the scenes. So we actually can use that reverse relationship. We can go from a profile to an employee. So P1 dot So this is the lower so notice that there's there's no field on profile called you know lowercase employee. Uh, but Django Django created that for us because we use the one-to-one the -one field. So this is the same, and we can do something like uh, one, I don't know if the quality works here, but. Okay, are there uh, any questions about that? So this one of the benefits of using an ORM like, like Django's is that you can, you know, you get this additional stuff for free. So you get this reverse relationship for free. Okay. So that's the one-to-one um, -one field. So now uh, in addition, so that's, you know, half of our model so far. So now we have this, this other thing. So employee project. <clears throat> um, so if this were, if we were writing raw SQL, we would have to create this field or sorry, this table and then the employee projects table as well. Um, but Django is gonna do some magic for us just like it does with one-to-one -one field. So let's take a look at the documentation for a, uh, a mini, many to many. Okay, so here we have an example of a, a publication and an article. So an article can belong to many publications. So you can have like a, a syndicated a syndicated column or something like that, right? So article can belong to many publications and a publication can have many articles. So this is a, a many to many relationship, but notice that there's something missing or seemingly missing from, from this. So here we don't have a third join table. So in our, uh, in, in our model, we had to have this third join table. And if we were just writing SQL, we would, we would have to have that. Um, 
But Django, at least in our Django code, we don't have to do that. So what we do instead, is we, we use you know Django magic and we say article. So we basically pick one of them, uh, not both of them, but just one of them and say, uh, we add a um, many to many field there. So we, you, you could add this to publications instead, but you can't do it to both. So it, you know, intuitively you might think, okay, both of these have to have many to many fields, but it's important to remember. So th this is kind of a, a way of thinking that you'll see the old encounter with Django is that there's just magic happening because everything's object oriented. There's multiple layers. So, you know, what you see in front of you isn't all, everything that's happening. There's also um, a lot of stuff behind the scenes that that's also happening. So it's important to be aware of that. So this one-to-one -one field, if we just look at the code, there's no obvious way to go from profile to employee, but this one-to-one -one field is providing that. And same thing here with this a many to many field. So we don't have to connect, we don't have to explicitly say, you know, publication is connected to article and article is connected to publication. <laughs> okay, so let's just uh, let's do this. So we know we need a many to many field. So let's go back to our example, profile employee. And so we want an employee uh, to have lots of projects and a project to have lots of employees. So class. the usual inheritance and then we're going to have a code code name and we have to supply it a max length and i'll just say 20. okay um so now we have to connect uh project to employee and employee to project we can do that through employees create a new field on project. We could do it the other way around as well, um, but we'll do it here. So employees, so this is, a, you know, you don't have to, you can call us whatever you want, but um, the plural of, uh, of the one you want to connect, the model you want to connect to is probably a good idea. Um, and then do models.many to many fields. And we have to, pass in the model, just like for all of these, for foreign key, for one-to-one. -one. So this is gonna be employee. And that's basically all we have to do right now. We'll give it a string method. Okay. So let's, let's try this. So I've changed my models. Now what do I have to do? Migrate. Yeah. So I've changed my code, but my database is still the same as it was. So I have to, you know, take those changes in my code and put them, you know, transform them into SQL and actually run them. So Python. Okay, so I've migrated these. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some fake data. Um, I have a quick question for you. Yeah, sure. Um, so say we screwed up and we migrated. Um, if we just rewrite it and migrate again, does it, comp does it just overwrite? Or would there be some remnants of like a bad table or bad class that we had previously migrated over? Um, so, yeah, so, so if, if the question is something like, let's say I, so one thing we could do is you can radically change your, your tables. So here I, I haven't made any like breaking changes. So it's easy for the, the Django, it's basically like, you know, a, a translator that goes from, uh, Django code to SQL code, but if I do something that, uh, that that breaks my current database, so for example, I have 
I have a field here where the max length is 10, right? And I save a bunch of data. So I have a bunch of names um, and some of them are of length 10 or whatever. And then I say, you know what? Um, actually names should only be a max of five. So I change this a max length of 10 to five and then I run migrations, it, it's not gonna work because I have data already in my database that is gonna violate this constraint. So what I would have to do is uh, basically modify, modify the, the data that's already in the database to fit, to fit this requirement and then, and then make the changes. So you really, like, ideally, you really don't want to be changing your, your database, if, especially if it's in production and you have, you know, lots of data already there. Changing it is not what you want to do. In development, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yes, okay. it is something that you'll encounter as you're doing this, as you're developing stuff, you'll make a change and then it won't work. And, and there are different kinds of errors. Um, You can try playing around. I would say uh, when you get those kinds of errors, especially as you're developing, you can give it a shot. Um, you can try fixing it um, properly, but I would say after a certain period of time, just delete the database and start over. Okay. Yeah. I have a question that may be related to that on um, line 13 on your one-to-one -one field. It, okay. required, it required the on-delete parameter yeah is that something related to that is, is it saying if you delete that one to, if you delete one of those one-to-one -one relationships it'll automatically delete delete yeah. the other table is that exactly so the idea the idea you know you could implement this differently you don't have to delete everything but for example if i um if i deleted an employee so i i have you know employee number five employee number five has a profile. So I, you know, I fire employee number five, I delete him from the database, but there's still this profile hanging around. So number five's profile is still hanging around, but it's not really connected to anything. Um, so in that case, you might want to automatically delete the, the, the profile. So that's, that's basically what this cascade is doing. But there are uh, there are other options besides Cascade. One other thing I found nice for like testing changes to the actual database itself is if the data doesn't matter and you're just testing like the classes you're creating, is if you write tests for it, you don't actually have to do the make migrations or anything before you run those tests, since it spins up a temporary database and then kills it at the end of each test. Yes. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Um, there are also, uh, have you guys gone over um, uh, fixtures? No. No. Okay. That's fine. So we can, um, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll introduce that. It's, so it, it, it's something that you would use, for example, with tests. So uh, yeah, as you mentioned, if you run a test, Django will create a temporary database just for the tests. Uh, and you can pre-populate it with certain data. So you could write, um, instead of what I've done, I'm using Django seed, which is fine. It just imports a bunch of, you know, random data. But if you wanted, if you wanted it to be consistent, you wanted to always have the same exact data every time, um, which could be useful, especially for, for testing, um, you would create a fixture, which is basically, it would basically be like a JSON file, which describes um, the data that you want to have in the database. And then when you, when you test, it will automatically pre-populate the database with that data. So you'd have the same, you have the same data in the database every time. So that's, that's something you can do. Um, yes. Okay. Um, all right, so let's take a look. So I should have some dummy data in here now. So I'm gonna go take a look, show plus, and okay. So I have a bunch of projects in here. 
Um, so now I want to see, let's say, I want to get, so for project, I don't know, let's pick a random project. So P equals, So I have a project and I want to see all of the employees. So P dot So what the, what is going on here? I don't know if this is is this too small to read. I can read it. It's okay. okay. So so what what is this thing? What is p.employees? It looks like a, a Django object, like the actual relationship as an object. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's a uh, many related manager object. So it, it's, a, it's a manager. So just like objects, you have project.objects. And then from the manager, we can execute different things. So it's the same thing here. So p.employees is a manager. So I can do p.employees and then it's an object. So I can do something like all, right? Just like I could do project.objects.all. I could do p.employees.all. So employees is a manager. So I can uh, I can get all of the employees. So on this particular project with this random randomly generated data, I have one, two, three, four, five employees. And if I wanted to do the reverse lookup, so let's grab employee of off. So e equals that objects that get equals okay so I have the employee and now I want to get this all this employees projects anyone have any guesses E dot project. Okay, so E dot projects or maybe projects. Okay, so that doesn't work. Doesn't work. Okay, so unfortunately, this doesn't exactly work. So on the one to one relationship, it did work because that's, you know, that's just what Django did. Here, it's a little bit different. So we just have to follow the rules of Django instead of uh, just project. It's project underscore set. So it's just something you have to, um, you know, that's just what Django does. That's just the way it is. Um, you can actually change that. You can add a related field. Let's see. I'm sorry, related name. So there's related name and you can, um, you can have your own, it, basically. So by default, Django will, will do it, um, but if you wanna have something else, maybe is more meaningful, you can do that. But by default for, uh, for this kind of relationship, many to many, it's gonna, the reverse relationship requires you to add underscore set. So to go from project to employees, it's just a simple project dot employees, but the reverse to go from employee to project, because there's no direct relationship in the code, you do project underscore set. 
and that project underscore set, just like you know, project that employees gives you a manager. So so does employee dot project set. And once we have the manager, we can execute stuff. So we can do all, we get everything. And we can see that this particular employee belongs to all these different projects. And we can do, for example, we could do filter. So we can just treat this like a normal query set. So I wanna get all of employee, you know, all of this particular employee's projects that meet that meet this condition. So I'll do code name underscore uh, contains. What do we do? Anything in common here? A Y. Yeah, whatever. Um, Oops, I have to add the dot filter. So now I get these, these two projects. So are there any questions about that? Now, let me show you quickly that, um, you know, this is what you write, but Django, Django is actually creating a third table. You know, there's just no way around it. Um, so I'm going to go in. This is a SQLite database. So I'm just going to do uh, SQLite 3. If you're using Postgres, you can just do the normal Postgres stuff. OK, so I'm in the right, SQLite database. This is just to describe the tables. And I can see that I have uh, projects employee, so Django. Django naming convention is the name of the app underscore and then the actual model that you made. So here's the employee model that we made. So that's right there, projects underscore employee, then projects underscore profile, which is right here. And then projects underscore project, which is right here. But then we have this other one, projects underscore project employees. So Django has created this, um, this join table, which has been you know named a little differently than, than ours, but um, it's it created this table. So this is you know convenient syntax. This is how Django does it. You can also explicitly write. Uh, you can explicitly write your own join table, um, and, and that will work fine. So if, if you want to do that, and actually if you do. If your join table is more complicated, if it has additional, um, if it has its own fields, uh, then you would need to create a, a third, a third table explicitly. So there explicitly, are a couple. Yeah, yeah. So if you, you explicitly create the third one, yeah. like the join table. Django's not going to then also create its own join table. Like, are you going to end up with two, or does it know not to do that since you already did? Yeah. So it, it would know not to do that, and. You, this many to many field, you'd have to add some other, you'd have to add a through. So this through keyword argument is telling you what, so you'd write another table, class, my join table, et cetera. And then this through would be my join table. Thanks. So that, that's how you would do it. It, you know, it, it's a little bit of a, you know, it's just how Django does it. So, but if your join table is just a join table, then uh, you can do it like this. If it's more complicated, then uh, you'll have to write your own join table and then tell tell Django that that's the one you're using. Okay, but this is stuff that you'll, you know, it's just quirks of Django. So it's, you'll just have to learn by looking stuff up, basically. But that's, I mean, that's the basic idea. So we've started with, you know, what is our concept? How's our application going to work? Um, 
Uh, we create this, we figure out what the relationships are, just like we did with raw SQL. Then we come in and implement that. And you can see that Django has some, you know, some, some things that are convenient, but that convenience also comes with, you know, some quirks. So we have this one-to-one -one field. This allows us to get the reverse relationship from profile to employee. And then the many-to-many -many field uh, does the same thing. Are there any questions about that? Okay. Let me stop the recording.